Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So today we're going to start the long-awaited 6.4.1. Leaving us with six chapters left to actually f hit our Thronebreaker title. Uh, this one has gotten delayed a little bit. Getting it out, and we're going to get the rest of the series out over the next few days. And get this taken care of so that we can get started on Cavalier on the backup count and get to par started on Paragon on this account. So let's get right into it, guys, because we got some work to do. So right off the bat here, I want to talk about the team I decided to bring in. Now, there was a couple things that um, definitely worked in my favor and a couple things that I kind of messed up on. But for the most part, the team itself is solid. I could have definitely used to have my Wolverine at a higher SIG level and preferably leveled up further. He does come into play a few times here, but part of the reason why he was brought in was for synergy purposes. So that was a factor in it. Plus on top of that, he, him, Nick Fury, and Ultron are all ones that were brought in for the path themselves. Colossus and Iron Man Infinity War were brought in specifically for the Iceman boss fight. Go ahead and get in here, take a look at the nodes, and talk about the differences, and then we'll get into some gameplay, and I will show you, you know, what went right and where I made a few mistakes. So right off the bat here, you are going to get, um, you get Deadpool first, no matter what. Uh, that one is a straightforward fight. There's nothing extra to him other than a little extra health. Uh, so don't worry about that one too much. Just fight it as a normal fight. Get through it. Get done. Um, I actually used Ultron on that for class advantage and went ahead and went forward. Now, there is a caveat to the Ultron thing, and that is that f on certain champions he's going to do the bleed that you need other ones he's going to go directly to a dj and that's kind of a hit or miss thing so you want to be careful on that um and know which champions to use him against and which ones not to use him against that is a factor to play into consideration but it's not hard make sure you got some good bleed champions in Obviously, I'm running Nick Fury because I've got him leveled up so much. And honestly, after the second stack, his bleed is just ridiculous. Um, Wolverine is the same way. If I'd had him leveled up and his SIG level up high enough, I could have probably done most of this with him by himself. Uh, but at the same time, there are so many great bleed champions out there. We all know them. It's not hard to find. Find yourself a good bleed champion or two, even three, walk through this path. Keep in mind a few things, though. Right off the bat, one of the things that you are going to need to take into consideration here is the fact of the path nodes. Now, we have four nodes that are on almost everyone on the path, with the exception of, like I said, the, the regular Deadpool, and then Gwenpool and Iceman at the end. So the, the path nodes here are going to be redoubled uh, determination, which every time you place a debuff on a defender, they get an extra 65% attack and an extra 20% combat power. A caveat to that is, is that if it is a bleed, a poison, an armor break, that actually grants double that. Now, the twist to this is, is you also have Do You Bleed as one of the path nodes here, whereas that the only way you can do damage to anyone on the path here with the uh, path nodes is by inflicting bleed. So no matter what, you have to be able to inflict bleed to even be able to take them down. All other damage does nothing, so you are going to be taking uh, powering them up by bleeding them. So you want to get them down quickly because they're going to be hitting like tanks, especially depending on how many stacks of bleed you're throwing on them. Make sure you're not bringing anybody in that's also doing, uh, you know, uh, poison and armor break. Archangel would be a little bit debatable here. Um, his, his bleed is through the roof, 
but with the poison on top of it, you could actually end up setting yourself up for failure because of the fact that you would be just jacking their defense, uh, their attack and their combat power rating up. So if they are able to clip you, they could easily take you down. So be careful as far as that goes. Outside of that, you also need to keep in mind that they have True Strike, which means they're going to ignore your armor, your resistance, your evasion, and your auto block. So don't worry about any of those things. And then Bleed Vulnerability. When the defender is bleeding, it also increases your attack rating. So that is, you know, again, it's a double-edged sword on this path. But it is a fairly straightforward path if you have some good Bleed Champions. You can walk through this. Now let's go ahead and look at the, like I said, your first fight being Deadpool and then Star Lord. Let's look at the rest of the path here. You're going to go up against Carnage, Wasp, Daredevil, Hell's Kitchen, Dr. Ock, Scarlet Witch Classic, Gamora, and then you're going to do Deadpool X Force. Now, after you get through the Deadpool X-Force fight, you're going to get over to Gwenpool. Now, Gwenpool is where you no longer have to worry about the path nodes, but she does have her own nodes as well. Now, the big ones to worry about here are, first off, she has Soft Guard. On Soft Guard, each time a uh, blocked attack is is received it reduces block proficiency by six percent all the way up until hitting 80 percent where it caps out at so you're going to have to worry about that to a point but the other thing that you need to keep in mind here is she has clap back meaning anytime you inflict a poison a shock a bleed an incinerate or a plasma debuff to her it also inflicts them to you as well, whereas you will take 100% of her attack rating as direct damage over a 10 second time period. So keep in mind that honestly, by the time you get to her, you want to stop using your bleed champions and use somebody else that's just going to be able to go through her a little easier. Um, preferably somebody who isn't doing poison, shock, bleed, incinerate, or plasma which is where Colossus would have actually gotten us through this fight fairly simply and then got him on to the Iceman fight, which is the other one he was brought in for. I will admit before we even get into this that I totally overlooked the, the node on her and continued to use my same strategy that I was using for the path of Ultron, Nick Fury, and Wolverine meaning that I ended up beating myself up in the process, and that fight is going to take a bit more than it should have. We'll see that a bit more as we get into the video here. Now, finally, after Gwenpool, we're going to come over here to Iceman. Now, Iceman has a couple different things to keep in mind here. Most of his nodes are fairly straightforward, and it's not really that big of a deal. He does have a protection shield, meaning that as long as that protection shield is up, you cannot do more than 4% of his max health off of a single attack. But if any attack were to do more than 4%, it after preventing the additional damage, the shield goes down for a time period and you can actually go ahead and punch into him and, and do some more damage until the shield comes back up. Keeping that in mind, this can be a little bit of a longer fight because you're doing 1% to 3% of his health at a time. Getting him down is going to take a few minutes. But otherwise, it's really not that bad. Um, he is stun immune, so do keep him in mind as far as that. You're not going to be able to parry to stun him. You're not going to be able to use your specials to stun him, anything like that. Stun immunity is going to... I, so don't go with your normal plan of stun, punch, back off, stun, punch, back off. That's not going to work. He also has enhanced energy attacks. Um, any of his energy attacks do an extra 40% uh, damage on what they normally would. He has heal blocks, so you're not going to be able to heal yourself up during the fight. And finally, the Matador node. 
which the only way you can gain a power of power is if he uses a special. So keep that in mind that you're going to be limited on your specials to only when he's using his. The biggest thing here is bringing a cold staff immune champion. Personally, I brought in Colossus and Iron Man Infinity War. First off, because they're both great cold snap immune champions. But secondly, because of the fact that they are uh, champions that worked with my bleed champions to increase my synergies here. So I was benefiting everybody together. But some of the other champions that you could consider here would be Sabretooth, Corvus, Silver Surfer, Absorbing Man, Annihilist, Human Torch, Mephisto, Emma, or Warlock. Just a few to keep in mind there. If you decide that either A, you don't have Colossus or Iron Man Infinity War, or B, you don't have them leveled up, and you do happen to have one of those other champions that I just mentioned there. Okay, guys, let's get into this and look at what I did. Like I said, right off the bat here for the standard good pool fight, I just went ahead and brought in Ultron. Fairly straightforward fight. Um, had the class of man age, plus on top of that, you know, I have a little bit of extra uh, buffer with Ultron because, of course, he, uh, with my Ultron, he is like 200 fully awakened. Um, so I do have the full read, I do have the regen at 40% and 25%, which guarantees that even if I should slip up too bad, I'm probably going to just be able to heal back up and walk through him, but it didn't even get down that far. And then we started bringing in Nick Fury. Obviously, like I said, Nick Fury has more bleed than anybody else on my team. Um, so... You know, figured he would be the best one to just go ahead and walk through this. I do have some other great bleed champions. Um, I tried to get through this first fight against Star Lord without getting to True Nick Fury, and almost made it. Um, was trying to make sure that I could keep him in that LMD for a few fights, and unfortunately, as you saw there, right at the end of the Star Lord fight, he caught me just before he went down uh so by the time we got over here to carnage still fairly straightforward but you know we were in lmd form i had to revive for wasp because i didn't even bother to heal up because of course we were going you know we were already in true lmd so we had full advantage here um came into the daredevil fight still not bothering to heal up um, which did cost us, so we went ahead and brought in Ultron, because of course, again, another bleed champion. Uh, I don't think Ultron's bleeds are nearly as consistent as Nick Fury's are, um, and they're definitely not as powerful as my six-star Nick Fury's are in any way, shape, or form. So this fight did take us a little bit longer than, you know, obviously the previous fights leading up to this. But it was still a fairly straightforward fight up until I pushed him a little bit too far and let him get to that special three. And off the special three, he was able to take us down. So figured, you know, I don't get to use my Wolverine that much these days because I, ha I have so many other champions I need to put the resources into that I haven't been as much as he is my favorite champion. I have not been able to put the resources into him. But he was able to go ahead and do the work, finish up Deadpool, or finish up uh, Daredevil there. But then we tried to go into Doc Ock, and of course, with class disadvantage and already being down, that ju he just couldn't do it. Um, so we just went ahead and revived up Nick Fury here, threw a couple of stacks of bleed on him at a time, and as you can see, he just bled out. Scarlet Witch is obviously an interesting fight here because she has so much, inter uh, so much possibility with that chaos magic that you never know what she's going to inflict upon you, and you might end up getting eaten alive by her before you can get what you need on her. 
But as you can see here, we were able to go ahead and just finish her off. I continue not to heal up with Nick Fury in going into any of these fights because I knew, worst case scenario, we were just going to throw a 20% revive on him and come back in. Um, with Gamora, we got her so close to being down. I figured, what uh, you know, let's go ahead and finish her with Wolverine. And then, you know, saw Deadpool and part of me just instinctively said, Wade, is that you? And went with Wolverine. Now, again, like I said, he is nowhere near leveled up enough to be handling some of these fights. But, uh, you know, turn around, bring in Ultron for class advantage. But the problem is, is in the class advantage situations like this, that's where that degen comes in. He's not doing the bleed damage. He's doing the de degeneration damage. And that cost us, so that was a complete waste. So we went ahead and finished him off with Nick Fury. Now, like I said, I made a huge mistake here on the Gwenpool fight. This one is going to be a lot of just watching me go down over and over again. I think we ended up using a total of six or seven times. Uh, reviving the three of them, um, you know. Three times of, or two times of reviving all three of them, and then one time, one or two times of reviving just Nick Fury. Um, but the problem is, is of course I just turn around and every time I bleed her, I throw more bleed on me, and I, I should have stopped and looked at the node again and remembered what I was doing and just went over to Colossus and we could have actually went through her and been done with this without using any of the potions or revives. So this is a great example, again, for you guys to be able to learn from my mistakes. Make sure you're not using champions that have poison, shock, bleed, incinerate, or plasma damage when you're going up against her. Now, what I did finally do to finish her there was actually heal Nick Fury all the way up. That way I had more health pool to be able to finish her off with and bleed myself down. It was fine. Then we brought in Colossus for this Iceman fight. Again, the biggest thing about this fight is as long as you are using a Cold Snap Immune Champion, it's fairly straightforward outside of the fact that you're going to be limited on using your specials because, of course, you got to deal with the Matador. But if you keep pummeling him, you can easily get him up to his SP1, SP2s, he'll fire off the sp1 so much that you can literally just build yourself up to an sp2 you see here i i took full advantage of my relic on several occasions we got him almost all the way down before we ended up taking our death blow here um yeah like i said we got caught on the sp2 there and that was all she wrote. So we brought in Iron Man Infinity War here and just went ahead and finished him off. That, you know, that immunity there and the ability to go ahead and just get in there and get him done. Iron Man Infinity War take, it takes it for the win. Um, and you can see here, guys, we were able to finish it off fairly quick, fairly easy here. Able to get through that next stage, and that leaves us with five left to go. We'll have all five of those coming out over the next few days or so, and we will be getting on. After that, we'll be looking at the ca uh, Cavalier push on the backup account so that we can get uh, have Uncollected, Cavalier, and Thronebreaker on here, and we're going to be starting to push Paragon on the main account. Got quite a bit of things coming here, guys, and I just want to say again to everyone out there, I thank you so much for helping me grow this channel, for all the support, for every one of the comments, the likes. Um, feel free to pick apart my mistakes. I make them, guys. That's part of what this channel is about, is pointing out that mistakes can be made and you can still make progression in this game. You don't always have to have the, have the top tier champions. It's not always about having Hercules as a six star. Sometimes it's just about working with what you got, making your mistakes, learning from them, and pushing forward. So I thank you guys again, and I will see you back for the next one. Peace out.